Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Settle It On The Screen <laughs> for January 2nd, 2015. I am your host, Michael Soroka, along here with Nick Houselander. We're right standing. We're, we're, we're up now. Energy. Not yeah. just sitting on the couch, you know, boring people to death. Now uh, we're up and alive. And our co-host, uh, Glenn Updike. How you doing, Glenn? Doing great, guys. He's in uh, TG Live, too, so if you want to catch him playing Mario Brothers on MAME, it looks like. NES. And yes, okay. Come on, Mike. What else would it be? And our guests tonight are uh, Stephen Boyer mm -hmm. and Steve Kletzlev. How do you say it? I'm oh, sorry. You just on. told us two minutes Clyde ago. Clyde Sam. Clyde Sam. He, he's in uh, TG Live 3 and Mr. Boyer's in TG Live 4 joining us tonight. If you want to see their beautiful faces instead of ours, you click on it. their cams uh, instead of this. But, you know, Why? Mega Man 2 is somewhere close by over here. Oh, maybe. I mean, yeah. he might just be still sleeping. Yeah, so uh, it is January 2nd. Um, <laughs> the scoreboard was tentatively be ready to be open. Uh, it's not right now. So It is cool very, very jet. close, though. Cool your jets. It's going to be here. Yeah, I mean, don't worry. It's... It, it, you know, almost, almost here. All right, like so. I said, this show will be here to talk to you and entertain you about the world of competitive gaming, of Twin Galaxies, <laughs> of the new high scores. You know, you're going to hear it here first, um, unless it's posted on the website. First. Well, I'm yeah, gonna be honest, yeah, you know, yeah. Gonna... I mean, if it posts on Tuesday, we, we still aren't going to go on until Friday. So, yeah. I mean, you'll, you'll see it there. First. But people are still breaking world records. Yep. Um, and that's who we're talking to tonight. Um, Call them the Steves or the Steve Brothers. Steve Brothers. <laughs> uh, yeah. What was it, November uh, 11th? You guys broke the uh, Mario Brothers world record for doubles. Am I right on the date? It could be wrong. Uh, I'm not, I don't remember the exact date either. But sometime in the end of November. Okay. That's it, was kind of late, it was kind of late November, but um, <clears throat> you've got two records. There's a no pow and then the regular play. How did you guys kind of meet to to do this type of friendship? I mean, you guys just talking the internet. How did you guys meet in person to kind of? How, I mean, how do you how do you go after a world record not living in the same place? I mean, me and Nick. Hey, you want to go for a world record? Jeez. Sure. I mean, how, how did it happen? It's a good question. You want me to take it, Stephen, or you want to? Yeah, you go ahead and uh, you know talk about the submission and um, how we started talking. Well, Stephen Boyer was a uh, verifier for Twin Galaxies for how many years? Uh, probably five or six. Okay. And the way we initially got a hold of each other is I submitted a score for Turbo Miss Pac-Man, another game that I'm actively going for the world record on, although not recently. But uh, at the time, I'd sent him a couple submissions, and uh, he happened to be the guy that was verifying mine. And uh, we just sort of did a back and forth, got to talking, and then I don't exactly remember how we got on the subject of Mario Brothers, but I remember I had told you about how I enjoyed that game when I was younger, and I was thinking about actually getting back into it. And then, of course, Steven told me how that's like his main game at the time, that uh, he has a cabinet for, as you can see in back of him on his screen. Yeah, and um, you know, he's been a connoisseur of that game for years. Probably and so our mutual love for Mario Brothers just sort of kept us in contact. And then, you know, just a lot of back and forth through either Facebook or phone or the internet. And then uh, finally we discovered uh, a program called Name Hub. It took us a little while to figure it out. But once we did, we were able to play two player games through Name Hub. And then when this event got introduced to me from Michael Simmons, the organizer of Play Florida. Me and Steven sort of collect collectively, where I, I think I invited you, Steven, like, come on down to Florida and let's do it. <clears throat> and, um, you know, one thing led to another, and uh, fortunately, we were able to make good on that, come down. And, and ironically, that's the first time we had met in person as well. So we sort of made a weekend out of it. We set the records on Saturday, and then we went uh, with his family to Disney on Sunday. And so it turned out to be a pretty awesome weekend. Oh, that's cool. That's awesome. Uh, I, I mean, I'll, I want you guys to talk about that a little bit more, but before I forget here, uh, no Boyer, you are the you had the previous world record with Scott Greer. So, wh what's going on there? Uh, well, <clears throat> actually, that's my cousin, but uh -huh. um, he kind of gave me the green light to go ahead and you know break the record, and you know if me and him start playing again, maybe we'll try to get it back or something. 
Okay, but so there's I no was pretty cool about it. There's no contract deal, right? <laughs> nah, no, I mean, you know, I, I'm kind of, I just like to play. I mean, it doesn't matter. I might play with somebody else as well, but, you know, Steven's probably my main partner. And, um, <clears throat> you know, it just, it takes a long time to really figure out what each other's going to do. you got to know where he's going to be, what he's going to be doing. He's got to know if I'm going to hit something up, up underneath him and, uh, you know, or if I'm going to kill him. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of practice involved. So, Steven, if, if you go back to playing with Scott, does that make you the designated pitcher? I think I'm just the... the uh, you're not on the team, you're just neutrality. You're, just, you're always pitching. I'm like the hired gun, I guess. <laughs> so we got a new world record, the default way, 1,186,090 points. Um, can you guys push that higher? Is there is there room? I'm not familiar with Mario Brothers from the arcade, so... Uh, absolutely. I mean, I'm really thinking it could possibly go up to at least one and a half million. Uh, there's a good chance we can get two million. Um, at the event, we were supposed to play from like 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., and they did not have the camera set up for two hours. So we had two hours to play. So we got to play two games. Yeah, well, they actually gave us the time limit. Yeah, by the time we started, it was like maybe 12 to 3, and we were like, wow really limited time because of everything else that was going on. And fortunately, we literally did one of them. I think the no pal we did on the first try. Actually, right. we did both on the first we try. We did both of them on the first try. But oh, the no pal could definitely be higher. We could get a million no pal. Like, yeah. I mean, healthy. the whole key is just having the time to, I mean, you got to realize, you know, Stevens in Florida. I'm in South Carolina. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. If, oh, we, yeah. if we live closer and we had a cabinet, the, you know, we probably have two million regular play and probably one million no pal. Okay. Is there, I'm not familiar with the arcade version. To be honest, I'm actually familiar with the Coleco version. And I right. know there's, a, and I know there's a kill screen on that. Is there a kill screen on Mario Brothers for arcade? I don't believe so. Okay, no. so you guys can keep playing. Yeah, there, it's, it's kind of like a marathon game. Yeah, there is a revision though. I think it's revision F. Steven mm -hmm. made correct me right. that does have a kill screen right uh for really? me like did they just uh, add that for fun or i think it was probably a I, i'm guessing now it was like a bug in the game and then they put out like another chip and kind of fixed that bug okay um and then of course you know if you wanted to play like in mame and play japan it's got like a kill screen as well you get like you get like an extra man every thirty thousand up until a million and then you get no more men. Okay. Well, plus the game plays a little bit different. I guess it's on harder or hardest or something. So it's got some differences. So but now when it comes to standard oh, market, there's, there's no timer, there's no kill screen. It's just all about surviving. So well, the, timers, I... the, the timer is kind of like the red fireballs. After a while, they'll get really fast. And that's kind of like your timer. You know, you need to hurry up and uh, finish up the level. So for uh, you guys, when it comes to POW or no POW, oh, which you. ones do you guys prefer? And I know obviously the POW makes things easier as in you can use the POW to kill bad guys, but I always found sometimes it gets in the way, especially in a two-player game, if you guys aren't like in perfect communication with each other. But Well, that's yeah. the whole trick is we, we know where each other's going to be and what we're going to do. And if he starts dropping down, I know I've got to run away. Um, yeah. But the no pal was something when I was a referee and I was really into Mario or Mario Brothers and there was really nobody else into it. I guess Tom was into it, but we never really talked. And uh -huh. um, I remember Tom. they had the no hammer Donkey Kong. And I was like, you know, I would really love to have like a no pal Mario Brothers. So it kind of took off. Um, was it last night? Was it last night you played, uh, Steve? Um did you get 4.1 million on single player? Yeah, actually, January 1st, top of the year, I figured, you know what, I had some free time. Because, I mean, to get the power, the regular power world record, I mean, you got to set aside five, six hours to be possible to even do it time-wise. I, I actually got 4,601,950, just 76,000 points away from Tom Badova's 
Power World record. So it was the first time I broke four million done. So it was a, it was a personal best, and it's also the official number two in the world on all platforms because Stephen Boyer had actually got 4.2 million on Maine earlier last year. So I had broken that, and I came just just shy of top five of us. And you did this last night? Oh, the uh, so it is, yeah, it is last night. Yeah. Yeah. I think yesterday afternoon. Yeah. Nice. Good timing. Yeah. Right. Something. <laughs> Something more to talk about. <laughs> terrible. No, exactly. We, we really appreciate it. Now I, now, I am currently the no Power World Champion single player. I did beat Tom Vadova's score on that one uh, probably a month back, and that's at 2,134,000 now is the, uh, is the single player no Power World record. So, really, I have that one. I have the double records with Steven, and I was hoping if I got that one, I could, that'd be it. I, you know, the, as far as the Twin Galaxies recognized variations, I, I could do a sweep, so I'm still looking to do that. Nice. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, it's always been the one, I don't know, the POW I always had. I have a competitive uh, two-player, the POW's the greatest thing in the world. Oh, but, yeah. Oh. Um, well, actually, you, you made a good point a little while ago with, uh, is it easier with POW or no POW? Ironically, when me and Steven do the two-player, oh. sometimes no pal is actually easier because we don't really have to communicate because we know we can't use it. So yeah, we just I've, I've always time. found the no pal with another person is easier. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I know what it is. I, I think you just get in a rhythm, and it's just like you don't have to think about it. And sometimes if I pal, there may be an icicle that falls on Steven's head, and then I actually kill him. Yeah. What's an ice? I'm joking. <laughs> that shows you how far I've gotten. Well, it's oh. not on the ice, right? What was that? There's no icicles on any S. Oh, no. There's, well, I was saying I haven't been into icicles tonight while playing in a MAME. So. Right. Yeah, that, that looks like MAME. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I used to play it uh, on Atari 2600. That's, gotcha. that's, what, that's what I grew up playing it on. And, I was never very good, but I mean, I still did play it quite often, but it was never one of my main games. <laughs> Get it? Main game? Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> stupid. I know. <laughs> Do you guys, though, other than Mario Brothers, though, um, oh. you guys ever consider playing anything else, uh, like, partnered up, or is it more of just single-player games other than this one? No, well, no, we want to do challenges. Yeah, we've talked about Joust, and then, uh, you know, there's always Bubble Bobble, which is a great two-player game. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. yeah. Can you guys play with me on a four-player? There's a four-player one in the new version. I need to re I need to recruit at least one more tree. For, uh, for which I game? Need... Bubble Bobble. There's a new version of Bubble Bobble that's four-player. Oh, wow. it's, on, it's, on it's on the newer systems. It's on the Wii. Okay. Or the Wii U, and it's on, uh, but it's four-player, and it's awesome four-player. I mean, it's you can you can get the, uh, the the special level like constantly if everybody's in communication. It's like it's almost like cheating. You barely have to meet anybody after like the tenth level. But it's a lot of. That's all I wouldn't mind seeing that. Of course, I don't have a Wii, but you know, I wouldn't mind checking that game out. Oh yeah, it's like ten bucks, and there's like there's more. That, there's still the original mode, so you can train for the arcade. There's okay. another. There's another mode. You can play one, two, three, or four player. And the four player, it just gets it gets crazy too. You, it's like you got to communicate, otherwise you might kill each other too. <laughs> oh, no, I, don't I, pop that. We need more. We need more points. What are you doing? Right. Well, you know the thing about Bubble Bobble. I was heavy into it with actually with my cousin at one time. And there's so many little tricks you have to know about. If you drop down so many times, a boot might have come up, or you know you get some kind of special power up or something. You got to know all the little tricks. Hmm. Huh. Yeah, but, yeah. There's always a bunch of, or there's ways to get the extra points too. Oh. So, um, yeah. are you guys planning anything soon? Playing again together, or? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Right now, the only way we could play is like through Mame Hub. Mame Hub. Okay. And uh, you know, and actually, I mean, without Mame Hub, we never would have went to this event and set these records. Because I mean, we had to practice for a few good months. Well, um, we also we also play through Calera. Yeah, we tried that one as well. Which the only thing with Calera is, it has a crazy like delay lag to it, almost like some 
some cabinets do. If there's too many graphics on the screen, the game just goes into slow motion. And there is slow motion. Whereas main hub, that doesn't happen. The main hub presents other problems sometimes, like main, delay. Main hub has, has some kind of bug. I guess it's called like an in, input delay. And I mean, we could have 500,000 on our first man, and then all of a sudden, somebody will get this input delay bug where like say you mash left or right, it'll go left or right like two seconds later. And you can't break out of it, so more or less your game's over. Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> Does anybody in the crowd have any questions for the Steve brothers? Hi Jace, how are you doing, sir? Hey, I just stopped by to uh, give you an update on the scoreboard. Oh, oh we got ju this oh, just man. made us our desk tonight. Literally breaking news. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's just a few minor bugs stopping us from turning it on. We hope to have it working probably in the next six to eight hours. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. Then, um, I'm sitting here like next week or something is what I'm thinking. <laughs> no, there's just there's a lot of detail work that goes into uh, tagging and privacy options and all this other stuff that is involved with the video uploading and um, the actual adjudication process works fine. We've, we've tried really hard to cheat it, to break it, to trick it. You just can't. And then um, <laughs> you, you really can't. You, you'd have to, you, you start getting into brute force tactics to do it and then it, it, you know when a thousand people show up to your front door. So there's no way to secretly break it. You 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 have to somehow try to break it in an obvious way. So it, it defeats the whole purpose. Um, and so we've been working. We've been up all night, many days, 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 working to get this working. So that's why I'm tired and not. Yeah, you look um, But it should be going up. We put. Um, What's going to follow on is we have sort of an elaborate Facebook, Twitter sharing function so that you can share your scores, your records, your all that stuff. That's going to have to wait for a few days because I didn't want to delay the launch. And um, it's a couple cosmetic things that you probably won't notice but will bother me. And other than that, we should be good to go. But probably right when we turn it on, there will be a couple of things that we hadn't thought of in terms of permissions and all this other stuff. Uh, Rudy, I know you have a tech support question into the, the group that deals specifically with your case. After we turn it all on, we'll look at how we manage that. So just hang on. And then um, that's pretty much it. It should, it should it, it will be very soon, very soon. Then it then it just starts becoming, you know, um, opening it up to greater tracks, newer tracks, all this other stuff. But we want to get it uh, stabilized soon. And I've been watching this Mario stuff, and my God, we have we have a Mario Brothers arcade machine here at the at, at the at Twin Galaxies, and just the idea of getting half a million, a million points is just it's ridiculous, man. <laughs> That, that's 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 some real real skill to be able to pull that off. I gotta say. Well, Jace, man, thanks for the effort, man. I think we all should give Jace Hall a round of applause. No, no, please wait until wait until it works. Wait, wait until it actually works. Like that. Don't jinx it. Yes. Yeah, that's true. I, I like you know I like, I like the layout on settle it on the screen. It looks really cool. Um, you know I'm I'm excited for. Uh, scores to come in. Um, you know, we're going to figure out doubles because essentially, we for a Mario Brothers score to go in with two of you, you guys have to create an account that's that is both of your names, right? And right. then you know, share the password amongst each other, I guess, and then um, then you could submit scores that way. So, you know, there will be a lot of special case things like we just went through this whole process of elapsed time, putting in elapsed time. Um, there's so many ways for people to get that wrong, and when you have it 
automated with people entering it. You don't want them submitting something and getting the milliseconds wrong and that stuff. So um, we'll, we'll 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 shake out the rest of the bugs, but it's 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 going to be exciting. It's going to be really cool. Um, we're going to be featuring uh, gamers um, and their accomplishments and their scores and their videos. And um, I'll be spending more time uh, helping live events and expos get um, uh, get uh, more viewers. You know, uh, there's a, something coming up in banning. I'm going to try to make it to that. We have a, a large event at Twin Galaxies Live coming up on the 15th and the 16th. So I might only make it on the 17th. But in any case, I didn't mean to interrupt your whole thing, but oh, no. since you guys were live, I thought you guys would want to know that the, the, day, the score submission is almost here. Cool. Well, I'm glad for the update. That's great. No, dude, we really appreciate it. Seriously, this is like... It just, it just came across our desk. Yeah, exactly. Tonight. It's great. It's great. So, cool. Thanks, Chase. Get some sleep. Uh -huh. All right, I'll let you guys get back to it and um, just ask any questions on the forum or whatever once it gets rolling. Cool. cool excited. Man. All right. Thanks, guys. Great, and, and, and great Mario Brothers playing. That's right. You got Sweet. it. Cool. That's nice. Um, oh, thanks, yeah, I, think we're, I think we're asking before. I'm not sure. I've kind of lost my train of thought, but that's okay. Um, I'm glad you no, that's awesome. in. That's, that's what this like... show's about. The show's about the world of competitiveness of Twin Galaxies. Absolutely. Um, I kind of like it. I give a little segment every week, just like five minutes, Heck just yeah. totally interrupts our flow. No, so I forget what we're doing. This is why I need my teleprompter. Yeah. Um, it, uh, it's, the it's, fellow it's, on the screen just got some pretty breaking news. Yeah. Exactly. Heck yeah. Um, is there an event coming up that we talked about prior, prior to the show, coming up in Florida again, free play, or is that another, or is that the event that I missed? Please forgive me if I'm not knowledgeable. There's an, there's an online event coming up for Mario Brothers called the Mario Brothers that's, Online Open. That's right. And that's going to be January 16th through the 18th. And uh, huge props to Corey Chambers because he's the one that set the whole thing up. And uh, I think Donkey Kong Forum will probably do a mega stream of it. But to my to me and Steven's knowledge, I think 10 people are going to be involved now, including me and Steven. And oh, yeah. uh, basically three candidates. Going on. I hear a bunch of static. Yeah, yeah. I'm stuck, I'm stuck, in microphone, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, we just went through a, a thunderstorm. Yeah. yeah. Seven. Yeah, don't worry about it. Just uh, probably first time. First time long first time. First time long time. <laughs> um, so uh, do you, now <laughs> anybody can play though, right? More we have more than ten people. Just go to Donkey Kong for <laughs> I think on Donkey Kong Forum, there's a dot that you sign up for, where you sort of click on a link and then you submit all your information and then you can be involved. Very, very cool. So is it like and, a shoe and you guys are gonna win? Everybody of all skills are welcome to, you know, you don't have to be like a million point player. Yeah, everybody's welcome. I think, uh, I'm trying to look it up right now. Well, I don't think if, if you're a good player, you want some lousy players. I mean, you gotta have you gotta have someone like me in there who can put up like twelve hundred and is happy with it. You know, I think it's important to all competition. I just got thirty oh, thousand. Yeah. Especially, especially if there's a mystery bounty like the Donkey Kong online opens have, because then you could just win some money. I think just being like a certain number placement that's drawn randomly or whatever. So. Yeah. You, you could win money, you could win 50 bucks being 8th place, 13th exactly. place. Yeah, that was really cool. Uh, I hope this one does it too. And I'm really glad that Corey kind of put that together just because <laughs> I, I normally do this on this show is I hate on the Donkey Kong, but it's, like, kind of it's nice to play something else. Yeah, definitely. It's nice to talk about something else, you know. And, and Mario <laughs> Brothers is a great game. I, I mean, oh, no, I, I like always Mario Brothers, find, absolutely. Granted, my first experience w of, with it was Clean Super up. Mario, no, Super Mario Brothers 3, oh. where you play. Was it really? I mean, it's not a real version. You're not getting points, but it's, it's the still, same game. It's a great version. But granted, it's to beat the other player when you're playing. Yeah, definitely. Player. It's a different um, 
but it's just it was just kind of thrown in there which is a lot of fun but oh then, definitely it was I my played, favorite part when the first time we got it and, and yeah anytime i see um the, the the triple cabinet the newer triple cabinets where they have donkey kong donkey kong jr and mario brother i i just play mario Brothers. oh I don't, yeah i don't even i don't even bother playing with no the there's really no point so i think i think because of that multi-cap contingent the donkey kong forum recognizes mario brothers as part of the family <laughs> well, I mean, they should. Mario's in it. I yeah, mean, of course. They should. So. Yeah. Well, you got to realize when uh, when Mario Brothers came out in '83, you know, it was like the the first appearance of Luigi. You had the first green pipes. You had the first time you seen the turtles, and even to this day, you still you're still seeing the green pipes and the turtles and Luigi all over the place. So it's a very oh, classic nice. game. Yeah. That's the first game he's officially Mario. Not Jumpman. Hmm. Yeah, not Jumpman. Not Jumpman. Cool. Yeah, I just well, imagine it's it's Mario, Mario, Super Mario. Three. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Jumpman Brothers. Yeah. <laughs> Luigi Mario Jump. Carpenter and Donkey Kong, but a plumber in Mario Brothers. Yeah, yeah that's right. Little, different career. <laughs> yeah, different job. Different job. Hey. It's he's it's proof that it's never too old to change what you do. I yeah. mean, you can you can you can change it up. Oh, I mean, he's changed his career multiple. Oh my times. god! He's become a professional golfer, professional yeah. baseball player. Um, he's a referee in boxing. Referee in boxing. Mm, uh, there you go. Yes, arts is in a profession, but you know. Well, I mean, imagine how fun Donkey Kong would have been if you could have had two guys on the screen at the same time. Oh, and you, now, and you could pick would've up been the awesome. Band. Throw them to each other. Oh I mean, my god! <laughs> Hit each other with the hammer. Oh, uh, and think of how great it would be if one of you could control Donkey Kong. Oh yeah, I mean that would be. See, this is the remix that I hope uh, Nintendo would do. Nintendo. Change. Or, <laughs> or block oh. people from going up ladders and stuff. Yeah. Get them off and stuff. That'd be cool. And you could work as a team, or you could work, you know, against one another. Yeah, and I mean, the question is, is, you know, only one of them gets the girl, right? Oh, yeah, that? definitely. Okay, all right. Well, and that's why if, if the other person makes it up, then you then it's a fighting game. <gasps> then it's Mortal Kombat. Oh, that would be, yeah, you both get to the top. Yeah. And it's just fight, and then she's like, fight. Yep. Fight for my honor. <laughs> and then the person who kills the other one, she's like, I will never be with a murderer. And you're like, crap. <laughs> and then the next level starts. Yeah, and then it's jail. <laughs> then you got to escape. And that's a different game. <laughs> <laughs> These are great ideas. Somebody yep. please make it. <laughs> I'll play this game. These are great mashups. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I don't know what the jail game would be, though. I don't know. Kung Fu? I'm not a game designer. Yeah, me either. I just watch World Records. So. <laughs> yeah, I can come up with stupid ideas. That's what I'm good at. Yeah, I know. That's why you're on this show. Exactly. <laughs> to make us all laugh. It's definitely not because of my video game yeah. skills. So. Cool. Is there any questions? Yeah, you got, you got anything on your side, Glenn? I know we've been kind of hogging them. How long would you say that you've been playing Mario Brothers? Like, for the both of you. I mean, I remember playing it. I remember seeing it in the arcade. I didn't really play it very much. I was always walking into the arcade wanting to play Donkey Kong. Um, but I always knew it was a great game. I just couldn't get away from Donkey Kong at the time. But I probably, I probably didn't even take it serious until about six years ago. Oh, wow. Were you For decent at it? I mean, or was it one of those games where you were always just like, God, it's so hard. You know what? Maybe I'll get good at it. Or were you, you always know, pretty? I started playing doubles, and we broke a million before I could ever break a million by single player. Oh, oh dang. We, we, we had just figured the game out as a two-player game. And um, I mean, I remember my cousin told me he was like, "I can get three hundred thousand doing it single player," and I was like, "Wow, that's that's a lot, you know." And then I think there was one Sunday or something. I wanted him to come on over and let's play some doubles, and he didn't want to. Matter of fact, I think he was tired of the game, and I just started playing single player. And next thing I know, I could break a million, million and a half, and it just kind of went from there. Yeah, that's man. That, it, that's actually amazing. I mean, because it is a really hard two-player game. It's I, very it's, hard, yeah. It's, you really can't be... you got to be communicating. Like, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's not nowhere... Like, Gold Max. 
Yeah, you but, can't have one person carry. No, I was gonna say I am I, I am awesome at Golden Axe or Golden Axe too, but if I have someone who doesn't know what they're doing as a second player, we're screwed. Yeah. Because they're right. you know, cause you can hit each other in that game, just like in Mars. You the other person really affects yeah. the other person. So you really if you're not in sync with that other person, you're kinda screwed. You know, you know, the funny thing is we can take our cell phones and we can stay in communication the whole time we're playing. But Stephen and I have actually gotten to the point where we don't even have to talk. Ah. It's, it's almost like we just know what we're going to do and we just kind of do it. And once in a while, he may say hit the fly or something. Yeah, see, actually, then Josh, oh, yeah. who used to be on the Twin Galaxies podcast, yep. and me and him can play Bubble Bobble that way, where it's just, I mean, granted, there's, you know, it, it, there's always certain stages, but everybody yes. has an assignment. Absolutely. And if something goes wrong, yeah. we rarely had to communicate oh, to, definitely. to fix the situation. Oh, that's how we are. That, that's we when you got, you got a true partner. That's oh, yeah. awesome. They're like when we would play NHL 94 together or oh, something yeah. like that. But no, that's awesome. That, I mean, and it's not easy to find someone else because mainly because usually in a two player game, you have someone who someone has to take the lead and then someone kind of has to clean up the mess. And if you're playing with a guy who doesn't like cleaning up the mess, you're not going to do very good. No. Yeah, that's not a very good partner. <laughs> Hell no. No, and it makes the game no fun to play either, which right. obviously leads to you never doing anything again. So no, that's awesome. I mean, are you? going to try to push still the uh, first player point record or do you think you're going to spend most of your time on two? No, I mean, well, I know Steven is, you know, he definitely wants to uh, probably break the record. And, uh, I mean, I wouldn't mind trying to do it myself. It's just coming up with that five hours to try to do it is hard. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. How, uh, how long does it take you guys? Like you're the world record you guys, the, the record you guys set together. How long did that take? Yeah. Uh, we set both of them within two hours. Oh, oh cool. Well, that's not yeah. too bad. Um, the no pal was probably 35 or 40 minutes, and then the other one was probably about a, mm, probably just over an hour. Yep. So the pow takes a lot longer. Well, it's a higher score as well, because it was like, uh, what was it, 1,186,000, and then the other one was... 627,000, so almost, you know, cut it in half. That's actually not bad. I mean, that's not even double the time, so. Yeah, I mean, if we could have went to that event, and if we had the whole weekend to play, I mean, these scores would be a lot higher. Regarding the comment about cleaning up or taking the lead, Steven is Mario, I'm Luigi when we play it, and typically I man the top, and he mans the pal and underneath. So sort of a clean-up spot, and I'm usually up top trying to sort of, you know, make a good start to the board, obviously, with the first couple of creatures of each face. So that's how we do it, typically. No, that's good. And, and somehow it always gets out of control. I mean, if not, you know, we'd never lose, but uh, the game will get out of control, then somebody dies, and then the next person dies. And um, one thing that makes the double, play, the double game more difficult is you don't know where the green fireballs are going to go. Whenever somebody kills one or it goes to the edge and comes back, it may go after him or it may come after me. Oh, and that's... Oops. God. Wow, you're really good at this I'm game. I'm great right? at this wow. game. <laughs> just... You guys don't have to worry about me taking your old record. Nope. <laughs> the balls are a little more predictable on one player than two player as far as where they're coming from. It does change. I mean, it is completely different. Yeah. It can be, given, given a phase. Okay. I mean, sometimes you have back-to-back -back green fireballs. They just form back-to-back, -back, so you can't even jump over one because you'll get hit by the second one. <laughs> Whereas in a single-player game, you would never see that. Uh -huh. So are you, are you guys going to – have you ever talked about doing other – games together i mean i know you talked about joust but it's like seriously like you're already planning it or like some uh, big games are playing on your own right now i think we can't get away from mario right now okay yeah. we're gonna yeah. beef up the beef up the mario scores then me and steven have practiced joust on main hub a couple different times now we're you know starting to i don't know get our oats in that one <laughs> oh that's awesome oh, nice. I don't think either, neither one of us is really good at Jow, so that would be like a, a tall mountain to climb. 
Yeah, but I mean, obviously, you guys work to work well together, so. Yeah, it would just take a long time, and I would say we would probably have to both play it single player and, and get decent at it mm. to really have an understanding of what to do. Are you primarily just arcade? Do you have do you play consoles at all or no? Who me? Yeah, either either one of you. Um, I mean, I got a PS3. You know, and I, I grew up, you know, playing. Um, first, my dad had Pong. That's what got me into games. And then I had the Atari 2600, and then I had um, Nintendo, and then Super Nintendo, and now I got the PS3. I don't really play the consoles as much as arcade or main. Uh, oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. that's glad to see. Yeah, same here. <laughs> you know how it goes. I mean, it's like when you grow when you're growing up and you've got the Atari 2600, but then you're thinking of the arcade and how the graphics look so much better. Yeah. And. Um, I guess it's just something I grew up with. I, you know, I never forgot about it. No, I mean, that was... I grew up with Nintendo mainly. I mean, my uh, my uncle had an Atari, but I had Nintendo by the time I was yes. four or five. But, uh, yeah, I, I remember that. That's what was such a big deal when the, when the Super Nintendo and the Genesis came out because it was the first time they came close to matching the arcade graphics. Right. Because up until that point, it was like, Nintendo was awesome. Don't get me wrong, I loved it, but... I still would rather go to the arcade because the games were still right. Well, it's, you got uh, the whole atmosphere, you know. If, if you get really good at a game and you go to the arcade, at least back in those days, the next thing you know, you've got ten or fifteen people around you watching you, and it was pretty exciting, you know. No, you know what? I missed that part of it. I did. I mean, we used to go to the arcade all the time, but there was no social aspect for us other than just hanging out with our friends. But um, that no, it always sounded so. So cool, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then that's why the the events are great. I mean, when you go to the events, that'll happen again. Same that's cool. Different. That's right. Kind of brings that's back right. memories. I find another place besides the arcade that I loved when I was younger, and it's the first time I discovered original Mario Brothers was pizza places. Pizza places where, where I lived always had like three or four cabinets, and that's how I discovered Mario Brothers, and then later on Super Mario Brothers. It's called Mazio's Pizza, I remember. It's when I lived in Texas for a couple of years. But um, I loved going to some, like, convenience stores or uh, pizza places, and you know, besides the arcade, of course. And they'd always have, like, and sometimes really random, like, unique titles that, like, what is this doing here? You know, and then I get up and start, you know, trying to play that. But I had the same home, home consoles, too, growing up. Atari 2600, uh, ColecoVision, and then uh, uh, Nintendo. It's all about Super Mario Brothers Duck Hunt. <laughs> oh, yeah. Definitely. And for those of you just joining us uh, here on Twitch, uh, welcome to Settle It on the Screen. We're the show here to inform you and entertain you about the world of competitive gaming, mostly off the Twin Galaxy scoreboard, uh, score chasing, uh, some um, speed runs. Tonight, we're talking about, we're talking with the world record holders on uh, Mario Brothers for arcade uh, doubles, meaning they're playing together. Um, doing that high score um so if you would like to we do have one skype channel open if you do have any questions uh for a guest um please come on in and uh welcome to the show everyone yeah um glenn we we, we i got we got you one question did you have any more i know we seem to be talking over you <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna ask like if for anybody that was interested in picking up arcade would you have any tips for them like starting off just beginner strategies or you're talking about for buying a game or actually playing it actually playing mario brothers um you know just set a goal for yourself like maybe a hundred thousand to start with or, or it could be fifteen thousand or twenty five thousand just set a goal and um th there's a lot of videos out on youtube go watch some replays and, um, you know, if you get to a certain phase and you get stuck, just look at those videos and, and pick up some pointers and just kind of go from there. Yeah, if you're just playing it for, like, your first time, like, maybe a goal is get to the extra man at 20,000. And then maybe the next goal, get to where the icicles start forming. And just sort of build slowly to that, you know, as you go along. 
Because I, I know, like, from at first glance, most people would look at the game and be like, well, that's a pretty simple premise, but <laughs> no. I've, it's pretty in-depth and intricate and complex. Yeah. This, this game, I mean, I was, I guess I was getting around a million and a half when I met Steven, and I seen his whole journey, you know, all the frustrations he went through, and, and the guy worked his butt off to get where he's at. And I seen the whole process, you know, plus we were talking a lot. Um, it's very possible. I mean, I, I don't know if I'm gonna say anybody can do it, but you know, if you really dedicate yourself, a lot of people can do it. It just takes a lot of time. It seems like the mechanism of how they move and stuff seems to come easier to some people than others. I don't really know why that is, but I've noticed that when I've talked to other people who've tried to play it. It's like they, they tried to play it initially, and for whatever reason, that small sample size scared them off, or they, they couldn't figure out how to angle jump or something like that. But then for other people, they just get on the machine and just start playing it. And it's almost like instinctually they know how to jump and do the, the Hey, guys, thing. you're in the front page of Twitch. Oh, thank you. Cool. Thank you. Keep going. Cool. Okay. Awesome. No, I, mean, I think that goes especially with the, uh, well, I guess the older games, because that's what most people started off with. But it usually does, you usually know whether or not you're going to be good at a game pretty quick. You know? I mean, you usually won't stick with the game for, you know, two weeks if, it, if you just keep sucking at it. But um, man, some games just seem to, you know, you usually hit it off pretty quickly with them. I, I would say first and foremost, you know, you have to like the game if not love it. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah, I mean, if the game is fun, I don't care if it's kicking your butt, you're gonna come back a couple days later, even if it kicks your butt again, but you're gonna keep coming back and eventually you're gonna get to the next phase or the next 10 phases and you're gonna start getting good. No, without a doubt. And honestly, that's one of the reasons I've never been able to get into Donkey Kong. We joke on here, we talk about how much we hate it. It's, I've never been good at but I've just never enjoyed the yeah. mechanism of the game. I'm really, right. that's always just, it's never been real fun to me. And, but I mean, even as a kid, I didn't like it. But as soon as I saw a game like Contra or Radius, I was like, oh, within two minutes, I thought those were the greatest games ever. And so I just always played them. So right. I think it just depends on the type of game you like. That's it, man. It's whatever you like. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, I have less attention span than everyone else, which is why Contra made sense to me. But, um, but no, that's cool, and that's it's that's why there's a million different types of games. But uh, no, that's awesome. I mean, we want to talk about your uh, your cabinets, though, you guys. What? How long have you had them for? Or do you? Bo I know Boyer, you obviously have one. We can see in the background. But um, Steve, do you have one as well? Yeah, I do. I can put the camera on real quick if you want to see it. But yeah, that'd be great. Uh, hold on one second. You guys have 1K people watching you right now. Oh, oh cool. cool! Thank you. And for those for those of you joining in, yeah, since, definitely. Since, this, since the viewership has gone up, you're watching Settle It on the Screen. Uh, this is a show about the competitive aspect of uh, high score chasing on the Twin Galaxy scoreboard. Um, for those, you know, you might have heard of Twin Galaxies before. Fame. Yeah. Uh, this is a place where you're going to be able to submit uh, for uh, world record video games. And tonight we're interviewing the. Arcade doubles record holders for Mario Brothers for the original arcade. Mm -hmm. uh, they're in Skype 3 and 4, um, so if you have any questions for them, maybe we can put them up in the, uh, we'll, we'll pluck them out of the chat here and there. Um, oh, it's not my terrible game. It was oh, wow, I just keep getting worse. Yeah, 30, it's pretty 000, good, man. 29,000, yeah. 24,000. Yeah, these are, yeah, you're, you're coming close to the world record. Well, my issue was is the extra slide. <laughs> On the NES, when you stop Mario or Luigi, they don't have that little. They don't have the momentum. Yeah. And then when you go to the arcade, that's where I'm screwed up. Yeah. I can never. I can never probably play the arcade. <laughs> I don't know. I just. I'm too used to the Super Mario Brothers three version. I, I, I can say this <laughs> much, man. When you're, when you're playing the NES version, it's nothing like the arcade version. I mean, it's like totally night and day. There's no icicles that's fallen. Oh, um, yeah. As far as the ice sliding, I'm not really sure. I, I just don't play the NES version that much, but we have tried it a couple times. Yeah, this is just the version I grew up with for the most part. 
Yeah, this I grew up with the Atari that... one, and the, the, Atari, the Atari one has the ice in it. I know the Atari one definitely yeah. has ice in it. Cause that's Actually, usually the, the Famicom version, I do believe, has the icicles. Oh, really? Steven, we were playing a version where it didn't have the icicles. Aren't you? You may want to talk about, there's a couple that you know, and they hold the world record on that version, don't they? Yeah, um, what is it? Uh, Matt Miller and his girlfriend, Michelle. And I think yeah. they've gotten over 3 million or something on the NES version. And that doesn't so have I, ice. I've really been ice. trying to talk those two into playing the arcade. And um, I think I got them set up with MAME and everything, but I'm not sure that they've really taken it from the next step or not. I'm not sure. So I just showed my cabinet. Uh, I've had this cabinet about maybe two years. Um, okay. It's not a wide body. It's just a regular um, cabaret, maybe. <laughs> I don't know what the right word would be for it, but uh, I really would like to have a wide body. As a matter of fact, the cabinet me and Stephen played at Free Play Florida was, was immaculate. Just really nice. Well, they, had, they had the wide bodies, and then the one Stephen and I, I think we have the same cabinet. And I think what that used to be was a Donkey Kong Jr., and it's a conversion cabinet. Um, yep. I picked mine up actually about, I'm guessing, maybe five or six years ago. Once my cousin and I got good enough on Maine, we wanted to set the record. I had to just go out and buy a cabinet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that seems to be the way it goes, which is cool. I mean... Did you it have to is. I mean, I, I've got it sitting right here in my bedroom, and if I want to play it, I just play it. That's awesome. Uh, do you have any? Did you ever have any issues with? It? I mean, did you have to be, do any building or anything? Uh, on fix it, it fixing it, maintenance on those. You, you know, the funny thing is, when I went to go buy it, and I went to the guy's house, he had it turned on, and then he was talking about some Miss Pac-Man's he had out in the barn. So I walked outside. We looked at the other games. Walked back in the house. The game was not working. And I said, well, did you turn it off? He goes, no, but yeah, I mean, come to find out the monitor had gone bad. Maybe oh. he knew it, maybe he didn't, I wasn't sure. Uh, so I think I swapped the monitor out. So I, I, don't really, I don't really enjoy working on the games very much, but sometimes you have to. Yeah, I was gonna say, I've watched Mike it. do it before, it looks awful. Uh, three Gallica boards, <laughs> two Bosconian boards, and one barely working Bosconian. I'm well, so happy. Yeah. What game was it that the maintenance guy said, don't touch this, it might kill you? Oh, that was Asteroids oh. Deluxe. That was referring <laughs> to the vector monitor. That was awesome. Yeah, that one never, yeah. He's Only like, Ghost played. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was cool. It was. Yeah, I got done with that <laughs> quick. <laughs> you sold the body, though, right? Yeah, I made 100 bucks. Yeah, that's cool. Did you get a discount when the monitor didn't work? I hope. I did, 50 bucks. Oh, dude. Something's it, it was enough. better than nothing, you know? Dude, no, that's sweet. <laughs> that's I say all day I'm surprised you didn't just say, will you at least take it off my hands? <laughs> you know, I, I mean, the thing is, the cabinet's actually in great shape. I've got stickers on the side. The joysticks work great. I mean, the game works really well. It turns on every single time. So I can't really complain. Yeah. And I only that's paid, I think, 300 bucks for it. Oh, yeah, no, that's <laughs> My cabinet works great too, except I'm, I'm having to replace micro switches uh, recently uh, more than I usually have for the uh, underneath the joystick. Oh, okay. My, my Luigi is down right now. Actually, I need to give me micro micro switch. But otherwise, um, oh, actually, you know what? The sound's not working on mine either right now. I, I don't, I'm not sure if it's speakers or if it's the uh, um, something attached to the monitor or not. But looks you like maybe. Maybe you call it El Dorado. Oh. <laughs> do you guys own any other cabinets? I I do. Oh. Um, I picked up a Tron, which it had some issues as well, but I got a great deal on it, so I, I fixed it. I uh, got the Tron working, learned how to play it, started getting over a million. Um, yeah. I've got a Miss Pac-Man. I've got a Bubble Bobble. I got for seventy-five bucks. Uh, with the hopes of maybe getting a world record on it uh, with two players one day. I've got a Donkey Kong. I've got a kangaroo, which I probably want to get rid of. Um, I've got like a main cabinet. It's like a showcase cabinet that I'm going to turn into a main cabinet. And I've got a golf game. I probably have too much. <laughs> No, you just need to start setting events up at your house. That's all. I have no room over here, you know. <laughs> 
<laughs> I didn't know you had that many semen. I, I have a Miss Pac Man. I just sold a Miss Pac Man, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, because uh, my friend Robert, who runs arcade game sales in Fort Lauderdale, he has like two Miss Pac Mans that he just got in. and He's going to convert one of them and, and just keep one of them for the shop for this event that we do every month. And so I figured whenever I want to play Miss Pac Man, I'll just go down to the shop and play it. I wanted to get a little more space in my in my place, so uh, so I was able to, uh, to sell it. I had it for, for a decent while, though. Yeah, I almost forgot I have a Jungle King and a Robotron as well. Wow. I almost forgot I have a Robotron, too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, How do you forget Robotron? <laughs> you you got to have a Robotron, you know? I mean, it's one of the baddest games ever. Uh, well, awesome. when, it's got to get to a point when when you forget you have something, you, you might not get... It's the size of your body. Yeah, like maybe, maybe I have too many. It's yeah. either too many nah. or it's time to just open up an arcade. Which obviously, hopefully you choose the latter. <laughs> no, I mean, I wouldn't mind getting rid of about three or four, maybe just keeping the ones I really want to play. But then my yeah. wife said if I sell them that the money's hers, so now i got to keep them. Ooh, oh, God, dude, yeah, God. don't sell them. That's that insane. Why would you do that? All right, Nick, you ready to beat the record on me? <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, sure, yeah. Hey, why, why don't you guys play doubles? Yeah, oh, yeah we're gonna. Uh, once I get my video working. Oh, wrong do we mind. need the whole thing? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because it's on a delay. Um, Our monitor's a delay, but oh. this is the real thing. So This is the real deal here? Remember how to put a quarter in? Uh, this? There you go. There we go. Load up my quarters. Oh, where are you? Oh, maybe you're going to hit start. you let me die off. Okay. Oh. Glad, did you have any other questions? Or does anyone? Again, anybody? Any questions for us? Glenn? Glenn? I'm trying to free up my hands. I got like 700,000. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, dude. I'm sorry. You can leave push to talk on. We don't hear any background. Yeah, noise. you're good to go. Well, I, I know you're done with speech. You, how's, how's Metroid going? Metroid's, uh, I kind of took a break from it. Okay. I, I, noticed, I, I noticed you were turning Ben on to it a little bit. I noticed Ben was streaming. Yeah, um, I'm going to get back into start? it. I'm gonna get back into Metroid, but uh, as of right now, I'm focusing on pinball because we have a pinball tournament coming up. Oh, awesome. Cool. We have 16 people competing, and right now the competition's getting kind of crazy just in practice. Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. Some pe people are putting up like humongous Thanks. scores that some of these pinball, you have to like survive at least over an hour. So, uh, uh, get in like the top three, or the or the ridiculous shot like the Bride of Pinball Pinbot, and it seems like people can hit it like there's no tomorrow. Nice Nick, and I can't jump. I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. Ah, uh, dude. So to both Stevens, I obviously we've talked about Mario Brothers all uh, all day. What are you doing? But uh, what are your guys' favorite games? I mean, if they're Mario Brothers, awesome. But what are they overall? Well, it used to be Donkey Kong, but I think I've kind of converted over to uh, Mario Brothers, pretty much. Just don't go around. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm a terrible. What player. about uh, what about you? Uh, for me, I, I love Turbo Miss Pac-Man. Uh, it's a fun right. game. I, I, I like it more than Factory Speed Miss Pac-Man. Um, I like how you can sort of make up for a mistake with speed on Turbo Miss Pac-Man. 30 seconds, guys. Okay. Oh, okay. I guess you guys won't see our score tonight. But thank God. <laughs> yep. It's almost over. Uh, thank you guys for joining us tonight. Appreciate it. Um, we'll be here next week, 9 p.m. Yes. Maybe the scoreboard will be operational, and we'll have maybe some scores to talk about. Will things be verified by then? We won't know. Uh, yeah. Please send us your comments about it, as well as we'll talk about it on the show next week. Uh, for Five seconds. Call, thanks. Thanks, guys. Thanks for thanks having us on. Thanks for Jace for coming on, too. Thank you.